We're gonna tell you how to put together a live call-in for your live streams, and we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, if you're live streaming already, you already know how awesome it is getting all of the engagement that comes when you are doing a live stream. To level that whole thing up a notch, it's pretty awesome taking live calls from the people that watch your videos and live streams. For this to work, you are going to need two things. The first is live stream software. For this, I personally recommend Streamlabs OBS. That's what we use for our live show and it's awesome. The second thing is Discord. If you're not familiar with what that is yet, you will be here in just a minute. Okay, now that you know what you need to do it, I'm going to pass this off to Zaggy who set it up for our live show and he's going to show you step by step how to set it up on your end. Zaggy, take it away. Thank you so much, Nick. Let's just get into it. The way we set it up for the Neiman live show is actually a pretty easy way to do it. We're going to do it on a fresh Discord server here so we don't skip anything. To create your own Discord server you simply hit this little plus down here and create a server. And for the purpose of this video we're just gonna call this one test. You probably already have a Discord server if you are considering doing a live call-in show but let's just walk through what you need to do. First off you need a few different rooms on your Discord server. It depends how your call-in show is gonna be. If it's gonna be you spend five minutes on each conversation then you probably don't need as many as if you were just to answer a single question of 30 seconds. That depends on the content you make. First off I would recommend you to create an entire new category because this way you can collapse it whenever you don't use the live show part of your Discord. Now we have the live show categories. To create more channels you hit this little plus next to the live show and we will add voice chats. We're gonna add a few different ones here and I will explain why when we've created them. And this is basically what your Discord server is gonna look like in the live show part of your Discord server once you've created the rooms you need. Keep in mind guys that running the Nimmin live show actually requires quite a few moderators as well. It's very hard to run a call-in show alone, especially on YouTube where there is a lot of trolls. We the moderators try to help out with everything else that needs to be done. Nick just needs to know he needs to go from room 1 to room 2, then from room 2 to room 3. We are gonna fill up every of those rooms in front of him with the people who want to ask him the questions. The people that want to ask him the questions have to join the Discord server. Once they're in the Discord server, we advise them to go and read read first so they actually understand what's going on. And for this part I have pretty much just copied what we use in the Nimenati Discord server. It is basically just a little guideline just so people have an idea what we need to be aware of before they join on air. Basically don't have any blasting TVs or radios next to you. Also have a thought out question before you actually get put on to Nick because there's going to be a lot of questions that has already been covered in other videos on the channel. Have a well thought out and very specific question to ask. And then there is a very easy step-by-step -step guide in this as well. Just basically letting people know that they have to join the waiting room where there's gonna be a few mods that's gonna be screening the different people because we do not need people with really bad microphones and such to come on air or even trolls that might scare off some of the viewers. And once one of the mods is cleared that this guy has no background noise and his microphone is decent and we can actually hear what he says, they get dragged down into the gateway. That is a hidden room that only the moderators can see and the people who get dragged into it. This is the place where we're just going to check out that they actually have a relevant question for Nick. If they have a relevant question and they fit all of the other criterias, we put them down into one of the live channels. The live channels are locked so only the moderators and Nick Neiman can enter them but everyone can see them just so people can kind of get an idea of how many people might be in front of them. If your live streams are really busy and you actually have a very active Discord server as well, I would advise you to go into your channel settings on the waiting room and put a cap of how many people you want in there at the same time. Usually we have like 10 or 15 in the Neminati. That means there is a max of 10 people in the waiting room at any time and the mods can then easily identify who makes sense to bring down and who is definitely not a troll and such. But once they're cleared from the gateway and put down to one of the live rooms, they just have to wait. Because from here on, 
Nick is going to be the one doing the work. They just need to be ready to actually ask Nick the question. Whenever Nick is done in the room above them, he's going to jump from room one down to room two, where a lucky person is going to be sitting and waiting with their question. But that is basically how it works. Then once Nick leaves the room, then one of the moderators is either going to force a disconnect from that user so the live room once again clears up and can be filled with a new one by right clicking on their name and pressing disconnect, which you can do as a mod, or just drag them into the general part of your Discord server again. So the room will be ready for a new person. The reason we have the waiting list is basically because once all the live rooms get filled up and people keep joining the waiting room, we might clear people and then bring them back into the waiting room so they can be there. But then we just note their name down and whenever a live stream room clears up, then we drag them down. You do always want to have at least one or two additional rooms with people though, because sometimes people go AFK, they might disconnect or something, and you don't want to have a part of the show where you're just going to be sitting there as the host trying to get in contact with someone. Then it's better just to move on with the next person to always have a few people waiting for you to come around. But that is basically it. Of course, some of the channels need to be hidden goes without saying that the mod chat should only be for moderators and it is basically the command center of what is going on during the live shows. The waiting room is public with a limit on and then the gateway is hidden so we bring people down there nobody can see them except for the mods and down into the live rooms only one person per room and everything should work pretty flawless from there. Back to you Nick. Awesome Zaggy thank you so much for setting that up on our show and thank you for showing everybody here how to do it. Since you are trying to take your live streams to the next level I recommend that you watch this playlist right here to see some other awesome things that you can do with Streamlabs and to learn more about growing your channel making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.